Good evening, everybody. A very, very warm welcome to our Book of Common Prayer Holy Communion service uh, tonight, which will be led jointly by uh, myself and Reverend Adam Whittle. Good evening, Adam. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you, Alan. It's good to see you again. And it's, it's nice to be, it's a bit different to be robed up in our respective um, <laughs> houses, but uh, it's great to be here this evening. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. So we'll start by singing together. Uh, and our first song this evening is going to be that wonderful hymn, Tell Out My Soul. A wonderful hymn that was and so now we begin our service with the collect for purity if you have the book of common prayer in front of you we are on page 237 alternatively you can follow on the screen and respond to the words in yellow we say together almighty god unto whom all hearts be open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have none of the gods but me. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Honour thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us. And write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we, and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her, in thee, 
and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. And a collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without thee, grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping of thy holy commandments we may please thee both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading this evening is from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. The Parable of the Lost Son Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him? My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wanted to speak on this passage this evening because I felt it was important to remind ourselves of just how much God loves us. I know that many in our congregation are going through difficult times at the moment whether through loneliness or illness. And I pray that this will be a comfort. A man has an older and a younger son. The older son works diligently all his life for his father. He never puts a foot wrong. The younger son goes to his father and asks for his inheritance, which, if you think about it, is a way of saying, Dad, I wish you were dead. You don't matter to me anymore. And that would have been especially shameful in a society where your elders are honoured and you're meant to look after them in their old age. And as part of that inheritance, the sons would have been given land 
so that they will come. So it's quite possible that the son actually sold the land that his father gave him in order to fund his lifestyle. So he takes his share of the inheritance and goes off to a distant land and, as the passage says, spends it on wild living. And I think we can imagine what that is. And, uh, but then a severe famine takes hold. And he has to do a shameful thing. He has to go and tend ten pigs, which, you know, as a Jew, is not a good thing to have to do. The son realises just what a mess of his life he's made. And he decides to go back, cap in hand to his father, and says that he has sinned against heaven and against him. And that he wants to be a, 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 hired, a hired servant in his father's household. Maybe he's not really repentant, the son. Maybe he thinks if he says the right thing, his father will let him come back as a hired hand. I mean, then he would have food on the table at the very least. He'd have shelter as well, and he'd know people. He wouldn't be a son as such, but at the very least he would have some of the trappings of his old life. Or maybe he really has come to his senses. He is truly seeking forgiveness from his father because that experience that he had in that faraway land has changed him and it has caused him to repent. Whatever the situation, and we don't know, the text doesn't tell us, the father's response is the same. The father sees the son while he is still far off and he's filled with compassion. He's so, so happy to see him. He embraces him tightly, puts a ring on him and kills the fattened calf and organises a party for him. In other words, he welcomes him back with open arms and says, welcome back, son. You are now back where you belong. You were dead, but you are now alive again. If we assume that the father is God, and we're meant to assume that in this passage, then we have a radically, radically different idea of God than one that many people in the society would have had at that time. As I mentioned before, the shame that the son would have brought down upon himself for what his father for what he did to his father would have been significant but actually there would have been people would have been shocked and appalled at the father's response who rather than giving the son a clip around the ear so to speak when um, he requests his inheritance he gives it to him when he requests it you know our god is just so much bigger and better and so much more good to his children than we could ever know. He is generous. He fulfills the request of the son, even though he knows it may not end well. But he respects the son's freedom and lets him go off and do his own thing. But the part of this story I love so much, and the part that shows what God is really like, is when the son is on his way home and the father sees him while he's still far off and he stops what he is doing, runs towards him puts his hands around, arms around him in a hug and kisses him. That is the kind of God that we have. One that is loving and passionate and caring. And he sees his son and he loves him with an uncompromising love. That same love is the love that we see on the cross in Jesus. Because that is what God did in Jesus. He saw us far away from him. And he sends his son Jesus to run towards us and meet us and embrace us. To kiss us and to bring us into his house where the feast is prepared for us to eat. A feast that we will have a small foretaste of in a few minutes time when we come to the communion table. And I think actually the spirit of this passage was on the mind of those who when writing uh, some of the prayers of the Church of England wrote one of the prayers of uh, the prayer after communion in common worship and um, I'd just like to read it out to you this is the prayer after the uh, bread and wine has been taken it says this Father of all we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off you met us in your son and brought us home 
Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful prayer? What a wonderful Heavenly Father we have. A Father that comes to us and embraces us no matter what our circumstances are. And so, no matter what circumstance you're in this evening, in these uncertain and difficult times, I want you to know that your Heavenly Father is running to you with open arms, waiting to embrace you. Whatever you're going through, know that he is with you, that he is compassionate and that he loves you. He's not waiting with a stick. He's waiting with open arms to come and love you with his whole being. He will love you forever and he will not abandon you. So I just like to pray for a moment that we will, we will all know that in our hearts this evening. Father, thank you for this passage this story of the prodigal son. And I pray that, just like that son, we will know your love, your deep care for us. That no matter what we're going through, whatever difficulties we're facing at this time, that we will have a real sense of your presence, your arms around us, holding us and taking care of us in these times. And I ask this in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Adam, for bringing God's word to us. We now continue with the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now to receive our offering. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offering given today through our banks and the envelopes in many ways through our lives. And we ask that you take that and use it for your glory and your purposes to help build your church that we may see your kingdom come here as it is in heaven. Amen. Now hand over to Adam for our intercessions. We now come to our time of intercession. It's on page 244. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militants here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty. 
beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may tr truly and impartially administer justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to our bishops and clergy, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And Heavenly Father, we pray for Garth Wadham, Peter Roberts, Jessica Cooper and baby Oliver Cooper, Dawn Molden, Barbara Isherwood, Shirley Short, and Raymond Meredith, Tony Caldwell, Brian Parry, and Alison Urquhart. And for those who are housebound for Margaret Zupans and Doreen Maysfield. And please pray for the family and friends of Stephen Dayton, whose funeral was last Thursday, and for Syl the family and friends of Sylvia Bond, his funeral is on the 24th of June. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Thank you, Adam. We now continue with the confession. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. We say together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in, go in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. I invite you, if you wish, to join us in receiving the bread and wine. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful.
Now hand back to Adam to continue with the Lord's Prayer. We say together the Lord's Prayer on page 257. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And uh, to introduce our final song, uh, which is going to be Guide Thee, O Thy Great Jehovah, which was sung uh, this morning at our 10.30 service. And it's a uh, a, a genuine Christ Church collaborative effort. Uh, the organ played by Mark Brown was recorded in the week and then people recorded each of the parts uh, right through soprano, alto, tenor and bass uh, in their own homes, mainly on mobile phones, and we've mixed it all together to form an amazing uh, choral uh, rendition of this uh, fantastic hymn. So please do join and enjoy the sound of our church organ and choir members singing and playing together.
I'm sure you'll agree. Well done, thank you so much to everyone involved uh, in that production. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. I'll just bring Adam back in as we finish our service. Thank you everybody for joining us this evening. I um, really hope that uh, you enjoyed it and that it really you know, filled your heart with the love of God, uh, what I spoke about in my preach. And um, Alan, what have you got coming up for the rest of the week? So thanks, Adam. Um, coming up in the rest of the week, obviously, Holy Grounds, we live stream on YouTube and Facebook every Wednesday morning, and that starts at 10 o'clock. Uh, the quiz is all, also emailed around, so you can take part in that. And then we have our regular Zoom catch-up call at 7 o'clock until 8. You can drop in at any point. If you want details of that, just email steph at christchurchpennington.com. Then, of course, next Sunday, um, our Sunday morning live stream starting at 10 o'clock and the service itself at 10.30 a.m. You're welcome to join us for any of those things. You can find those by searching on Facebook for Christchurch Pennington or similar on YouTube. And if you don't already, please follow us or subscribe to those channels and then you can keep uh, updated with everything that's going on live stream uh, from Christchurch week by week. Thanks okay. everybody. All right, thank you, Alan. And All right, thanks so much, Adam. everybody. It's been wonderful yeah. sharing the service uh, with you uh, this evening and thanks to everyone right. joining us. Do stay well and uh, take every bit of care and uh, enjoy lockdown as much as you possibly can. Bye for now. Bye-bye.